Good morning on this 18th Sunday of Trinity. The Lord be with you. Well, welcome to our eight o'clock reading and reflection and prayers again. Today we are listening to Jesus in the last few days before he was arrested. He is in Jerusalem, having ridden in on the back of a donkey, uh, the events we celebrate on Palm Sunday. And he has also been to the temple and upturned the tables of the money changers. And now we hear him talking to those who are, not surprisingly, somewhat hostile. So the reading is taken from the Gospel according to St Matthew, chapter 22, reading from verse 1. Once more Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the out of darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I think this parable can be seen as quite draconian, but I think it's worth remembering who Jesus is talking to when we look at it. He is talking to the chief priests and Pharisees, the people who will very shortly have him arrested and try and persuade the Romans successfully in the end, but they have to try quite hard to have him put to death. And it is to them that this parable is directed. He says the kingdom of heaven is compared to a great king who invites everyone to this wedding banquet, but they don't come and they get invited again. And not only do they not come, but they have those messengers, those slaves who've been sent to invite them, put to death. And then the king gets cross and he goes out and kills those who have been invited but don't come. And then he sends and invites everybody, everybody off the streets. And they're invited to the wedding banquet and the wedding hall is filled with all these wonderful guests. Well I think it's fairly obvious that Jesus is talking about the people who are invited as those who are standing before him, the chief priests and the Pharisees, for they are indeed the ones who are part of supposedly the kingdom. But Jesus is saying you can't you can't be of the kingdom if you're not coming to the feast, if you're not doing as the king wishes. 
and the direction is they're not doing as the king wishes. They get invited more than once and this reference to them putting the uh, slaves with the invites to death is a reference to what happened to many of the prophets. Something Jesus says elsewhere, they, the prophets came and you slain them. Again he's accusing the chief priests and the Pharisees and he's warning them. He's saying, you know, what will happen to you is not going to be good. Remember, it is a parable. He's not literally threatening to murder them, but it will be as bad. It will be as bad what will happen to them. Because can you imagine being faced with what you've done when you have had the Son of God put to death? But, says Jesus, everybody is then invited. This presages what happens. We are all invited to God's banquet and many do come. And the wedding hall is filled with guests. And then we get this strange bit at the end of this parable when the king comes to the guests and says, but hang on, what about you? You're not wearing what you ought to be wearing. Now, a little bit of background is quite useful here. In uh, weddings back in first century uh, Palestine, robes were given to people as they arrived that they were to wear to the wedding banquet. So it's almost like this person has got in sort of through the side door, not come in properly and is not properly dressed. But still, it does seem that the king, given that he's invited everybody, is a bit harsh on him and he has him bound and thrown out. But I think this part of the parable is a warning in fact to us. It is that we are all invited to the banquet of God. We are invited into the kingdom of God. He starts this parable by saying the kingdom of heaven is like this. But we have to do our bit too. We can't just turn up. We have to change our behaviour represented by the clothes of what of the guests what the guest is wearing we have to do our bit we have to be jesus's disciples we have to behave like we're in the kingdom of god like we believe because we do and that is the challenge to us for today and in this world today it's not easy, is it? We're worried about possibly new lockdowns coming, certainly about rising COVID deaths. Certainly some of us will be working in hospitals or in key roles again. What's going to happen? It's very difficult to know. And yet, even in these difficult times, we are invited to feast at God's table. It just may perhaps be that little bit more difficult for us to turn up. Remember, some people didn't come because they were busy with their farms or their businesses. It's very easy for us to get busy doing different things. And yet we are called and we are invited. And the rewards are amazing. The wonderful banquet. We get that detail in this reading of how involved the king is in preparing the banquet, how, we tell, how he, we're told how he's slaughtered the uh, fatted calves and so forth. He has prepared it all. It is there for us. Sometimes it's hard for us to turn up. Sometimes it's hard for us to put the right clothes on to behave appropriately. But all we need to do is keep trying and we will feast at God's table. Amen. So let us remember those who are struggling especially today, perhaps struggling to see or feel the presence of God in body, mind or spirit, who are in need of healing, who are in need of that time with God. And by name, today, O oh Lord, we pray for Anne Armstrong, Mary Tragheim, Laura Peachy, John Bilk, Michael Smith, 
Sandra Marshall and the Marshall family, Maylene Smith, the Conway family, Jean Winch, Gillian Watkins, the Danforth family, Caroline and all the Jordan family, Cynthia Davis, Marion Dennis, Chrissy Everett, Sue Petty and Julie Hotham. And Lord, we pray that you will invite all these people to feast with you, that they may give them relief from whatever is troubling them. And Lord, we do remember before you the recently departed, Kingsley Owusu Asari and Ronnie Jordan, whose services were held this last week, Bernard Hyde and Geoffrey Cross. And at this time of his birthday, we remember John Wright. And Lord, we pray, knowing that they are safe with you, but that they are missed on this earth. And so we pray for those who especially miss them today and for all who are bereaved and missing their loved ones. Amen. And we finish our time of prayer this morning by praying together as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love this day and always. <laughs>